Great. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our CPD plus DEI workshop on bringing your whole identity to the workplace. I'm Alicia Alex. I'm the Associate Director in Career and Professional Development, and I'm joined by my colleagues, Chris Hurley, who's a career advisor in our office, as well as our colleague, Liz Lanfier, Director of Events, Programming and Engagement for DEI at Art Center. So today we're going to explore how your identities can impact your career and your job search. You'll learn more about your own identity, hopefully, how to evaluate if a workplace will be a good fit for you to thrive, and tips to empower you to bring your whole self to work. Um, so with that, I will hand it over to Liz to kick us off. Alicia, thank you so much. It's so great to be um, co-hosting this workshop with you, and it's so important to be talking about um, our identities. This might be something that you've done a lot of research about, you know yourself really, really well, um, but there's a chance that maybe there's a part of your identity that you haven't explored yet. So we're going to go into that a little bit. Um, feel free to ask questions um, either in the chat or save it to the end, um, but let's talk about identity a little bit. So who you are and what is important to you. That's kind of a you know general definition of identity. And the best way to know if a company or organization supports your whole identity is to first narrow down who you are and what is important to you. So this is not to put you in a box or label you or anything like that, um, but when you get to know yourself better, you can get to know others better as well. And as you make space for your whole identity in the workplace, you find you'll be able to make space for others' identities. Um, and therefore you are authentically creating a more equitable workplace for everyone. So go ahead and advance to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so this is an example of a social identity wheel. So there's lots of different examples of a social identity wheel. Um, you can find them on Google. <laughs> I did a simple Google search for this image. Um, I don't necessarily agree with this image. This is the closest image I was able to find that I really liked. Um, but let's talk about this image for a second. So there's the social identity wheel. There's the inner circle and the outer circle or the inner wheel and the outer wheel. So the inner wheel represents things that are most likely to be fixed about ourselves. And the outer wheel represents things that are that may or may not change over time. So what does that mean? Let's talk about that for a second. Um, the inner wheel, uh, the categories here, age, sexual orientation and identity, ethnicity, race, gender and physical abilities or qualities. So I would say for the most part, these are things that are fixed. We, these are things that are, we are born with. Um, I would say with exception to potentially physical abilities, um, those can change over time. And we may find ourselves um, identifying as disabled over time or coming out of that definition for ourselves, um, depending on you know, what is going on with us. Also gender, we know that gender is not necessarily a fixed category and that people can be gender fluid. Um, so accepting those categories, we know that things um, that we can't change um, are the things that people can also look at us and make those associations with us. Um, the things on the outside of the wheel are things that are going to change over our lives. Um, so our appearance is going to change. Our marital status is going to change. Um, our language um, of, whether we're speaking the language that is of the country that we are currently in <laughs> may change if we find ourselves working in a different country. Um, military experience may change, job classification may change. Um, so these are things that aren't necessarily um, going to stay fixed for the rest of our lives, education, parental status. Um, so take a moment to look at the wheel and what identities most represent you or the identities that you most associate with. And this might be different for each person. And this might also be different than what people assume from the outside, what you look like from the outside. You may have identities that you associate with that maybe a lot of people don't know about. So just go ahead and scan the wheel, take some personal notes. And again, this is not that this wheel is perfect. If you have some criticism of the wheel, that's absolutely okay. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and advance to the next slide because the wheel's on the next slide as well. So um, 
when looking for a workplace that supports me, and so I'm going to talk about myself for a second, just because that's the person I know the best. Um, I know that I present as a white, cisgendered, married, able-bodied, middle-class, female person who is outgoing, easily approachable, and speaks fluent English. Um, so my that's my inner circle, and those are the things that are pretty fixed, and those are the things that people most, when they see me, they may have those immediate associations with me. Um, but my outer circle, the things that I am less likely to talk to a stranger about, um, but that are still part of my identity are, I'm also identify as a queer person. I have previously identified as dis disabled and I may identify as disabled again in the future. Um, I'm a mother of one and about to be two children and I come from a very poor upbringing um, and I have a strong desire for justice. <laughs> so, those are the kind of the things that I find important to me. So when I'm looking for a workplace, um, even though I might talk about my outer circle identities with anyone but close friends or perhaps the HR human resources at the company that I'm working at, I still want a place that supports those aspects of my person. And I want a place that supports um, people who aren't just cis, white, hetero, able-bodied male humans. I want place a, play, a workplace that supports people outside of just that narrow category of humans. So those are the things that I'm looking for. And how do I start to identify companies um, that have those same values that I do? And again, those values may be different than um, you know, what, um, what you're looking for. So depending on like your country of origin, you may want a um, workplace that, that um, supports uh, international business and um, is excited about hosting, um, you know, events and companies and, and different business places um, around the world. You might want um, a company that um, is, you know, talks about how many languages they um, support within their workplace. You might want a company that talks about um, physical abilities and disabilities very openly because that is a place that sounds like it supports you. You may want a place that celebrates pride very openly because that is the place that supports you. You start to identify these things that where you value or where, what, what is important to you and then look for companies that align with those values. So I'm gonna hand it back off to Alicia. Actually, Chris. Yeah, I think it's me, I'll jump in. So hi everyone, very excited to be uh, joining this, this talk and excited that you're all here. Uh, similar to what Liz said, we're really excited to be partnering with uh, the DEI office and, and just because I think um, identity is incredibly important and it's been incredibly important to me and, and understanding myself and, and how I fit in the workplace. Uh, so we're really excited to be here from career and professional development to kind of tie the two together of, of you know, thinking about when you leave Art Center, how can you help ensure that you might be in a, a positive experience? you know, space for yourself. So researching a company beforehand can really give you the leg up and it can just save you a lot of time and energy and just help you identify if this place that you're going to can be a good fit. Uh, so there are some things that we're going to talk about today of like how you could maybe uh, help identify if that company is going to be a good fit for you and, and some something that's in line with your identity and your values. Uh, so we're gonna be looking at uh, employee resource groups or otherwise known as ERGs, uh, mission statements, uh, DEI statements, and kind of the difference between a mission statement and a DEI statement, the company organization and, and how they're structured, as well as the DEI resources that they provide and DEI events. I know Liz just mentioned like companies taking uh, part in like events like Pride and local community events, as well as uh, thinking about how are they marketing their products and who are they partnering with to market those products. Um, and with the digital age, influencers have become incredibly popular and powerful uh, to help market brands and thinking about who are they working with and are they representing uh, the identities that you want to be seeing in your cultural workplace. Uh, and then if, uh, finally, just company reviews. So we'll go on to the next slide, Alicia. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about employee research resource groups, otherwise known as ERGs. And so ERGs are just a great way for employees to connect with one another. And so as a group of employees who come together and build a small community within their specific workplace, and that those communities can be based on just different shared interests, identities, as well as just life experiences. And so 
uh, examples of like typical ERGs are focused around like culture or race and ethnicity, uh, uh, disability or a, uh, ability status, religion, sexual orientation, and gender identities. Uh, parents and caregivers, the whole list. And so these are just a great way to get involved within a community. And they also can just be around hobbies too, like cooking or hiking or reading. So um, there are some ERGs here at Art Center that I just wanted to share as an example. So we have a couple of active ERGs and a couple that are non-active. So they just uh, are, are kind of waiting to uh, become active soon. And so some examples that we have are the Asian employees ERG, the Latinx employees ERG, uh, the gamers ERG, the financial wellness ERG, and the LGBTQ employees ERG. So as you can see, it, there's a really large spectrum of, of different identities that are represented in the ERGs and it's ways for people to come together and kind of share their experiences and find support within the company. Uh, some of the non-active art center ERGs, we have the Black Employees ERG, the Women's um, Mentoring Group, as well as the Disabled or uh, Disabled Caretakers Group. And so we'll go on to the next slide. So company research is incredibly important. And as I said, it can really help you identify if this if this company is going to be a good fit for you and and kind of thinking on a personal level uh, I wanted to bring art centers DEI office into the conversation because that was actually a big uh, component of me making my decision to move on to art center was the fact that there was a DEI office and so uh, their mission is um, when you're looking at the mission of the company you, you want to review it and get a sense of is this mission something that I connect with is it something that is aligned with my values? Um, we also want to take a look if they have a specific DEI statement. So there might be, you know, the mission of the company might be one thing, but they also might want to uh, really promote DEI within their workspace, as well as kind of the products that they're making, and as well as to their consumers. So a lot of companies will create a DEI statement. And so this is actually the DEI office's statement, which uh, reads, we seek to prepare designers, artists, and innovative leaders of the future with the tools to become global creative catalysts for, the, for a world where every product, system, environment, film, and artwork, uh, uh, sorry, effectuates a more accessible, inclusive, culturally diverse, and equitable way of life for all. So that is, like I said, DEI's vision statement, and it just kind of helps ground and put some, some, a different lens on what they're doing as an organization. And uh, there's also the company organization. So here we're looking to see, you know, are there dedicated people that are working in this space? So do they have a dedicated office for DEI? Like who are their staff? Is there what's called a chief diversity officer or CDO that is located at the executive level? And a, a great question that Liz kind of challenged us on when we were building this presentation was, are they separate from HR? And really having that kind of distinct uh, office or distinct person resource that is separated from HR kind of changes the dynamic within a company and how they view DEI. So uh, on the screen, you see the DEI team here at Art Center. So you have Dr. Aaron Bruce, who's the VP Chief Diversity Officer. So again, thinking about that Chief Diversity Officer, the CDO, that would be Dr. Bruce on our campus. And as I said, with Dr. Bruce's role, that was a big catalyst for me to say, okay, Art Center really is treating DEI uh, significantly, and it's not just kind of a placeholder or uh, uh, kind of performative act that they have a chief diversity officer, someone that's in the executive cabinet that is helping facilitate the culture on, on the campus. And then, of course, we have uh, Liz, who's on the call with us, Liz Lanfear, uh, who's the director of events, and then Stephen Butler, who is their creative operations manager, and then Myra, uh, uh, Whittington, who is uh, the coordinator of the office, who I believe is off campus right now, and will be joining back in a little bit. Um, we'll go to the next slide. And so, again, thinking about like that company research, there's a couple other things that you may want to look into. You may want to look into, are there any specific DEI resources? Does the company have anything available that's supporting DEI within their, their, uh, their, their culture? So, some things to look out for is, are they having any specific staff trainings? Uh, and as well as, are there reporting systems? So if something were to go wrong, like how 
would you be able to report those comfortably and, and have the support there at the company? Thinking about like DEI events, so beyond the ERGs, which again are like smaller groups uh, of, of the community, smaller pockets, uh, are there company-wide events that are happening that are specifically DEI focused? And is the, the company also participating in local DEI events? And I know we mentioned Pride, but you know there are a ton of other ones as well. Um, and again, thinking about the influencers and, and how they market their products, you know, how does the company portray itself to the public? And this can, you can do some research on this via their social media, you can take a look at their website, but just like understanding, you know, how are they presenting them, themselves, but also thinking about who are their customers and is their customers would you be serving, you know, serving a customer base that you feel really comfortable with, confident with, uh, and want to serve? Um, and are they reaching out to that diverse customer base? Are they expanding the, their market base? And are they being conscious of the different needs of different communities? As well as who is marketing their products? So representation really matters and thinking about how can, or how does this company uh, market themselves and market their products can also be a good lead and understanding of will it be a good fit for you. There's also company reviews. So there are tools like Glassdoor where you can see what other, you know, other employees, past employees have written about. Um, I always recommend taking any kind of company review like that with a grain of salt, right? Uh, I always find that if people are more likely to review if they have a bad experience, but another great way to do that is to actually get connected with someone within the company, uh, especially getting connected with someone who, you know, maybe has a similar identity to you that you want to really talk about their experience. And that's just a really fantastic way to uh, really get a, a, an insider scoop of what it's like to work at that company. I'll do the next line. Thanks. And so I, I just wanted to bring up a couple different case studies that I thought were really fantastic. And I'll be sure to, to drop these links in the chat in case you want to explore the, these companies further. But um, the Creative Re uh, Reaction Lab is just a fantastic organization. And what's really amazing is their mission statement, which I put up on the screen, uh, which reads Creative Re uh, Reaction Lab's mission is to educate, train, and challenge Black, Black and Latinx youth to become leaders designing healthy and racially equitable communities. We're challenging the belief that only adults uh, with titles, example, mayors, CEOs, etc., have the power and right to challenge racial and health in, uh, inequities. However, we are conscious that it's not just the work of the people that have been historically uh, under uh, underinvested to dismantle oppressive systems. Therefore, we are rallying an uh, intergenerational movement of redesigners for justice. And so when we're looking at that mission statement, there's a couple of things that I really connect with, right? Um, of course, the uh, Latin, Latinx youth, so focusing on kind of younger designers, focusing on you know, these different uh, communities that exist, as well as thinking about that they're really about bringing a lot of people into the conversation to help solve uh, injustices and inequities. So, uh, and I also really like that they talk, you know, they use this word redesigners, which is really a powerful word for me. And it's not just designing, but it's taking a system and redesigning it. And so as I was going through this organization, I also really connected with their company like org chart. And so they have a really fantastic kind of meet the staff portion of their website. And some things that I really enjoy about this is and they have a really highly diverse staff. And it's also a little bit more of a flatter organization, meaning that like kind of there's not a huge hierarchy and they, they call the staff members co-creators. So there's a lot of investment from the staff to making the organization great. Um, not only that, but they also just introduce their pronouns just directly in the, uh, the staff page, which I thought was just a really fantastic way. It kind of tells me a little bit more about the company culture and specifically, you know, how uh, they use and facilitate with pronouns, uh, as well as just showing their value, uh, values in their equity designer and like design ally, uh, ally format. So uh, you might, it might not be, you know, it might be a little too small on the screen, but if you can see that they have um, a section below their pronouns that says uh, equity designer. And those are some of the things that they're really excited and passionate about and focus on in the organization. And then the design ally, ally uh, being something that they are, uh, that they are uh, just really looking um, forward to supporting. 
And so something that's a little bit more corporate with the next slide uh, is Netflix. So, you know, that, that organization, Creative Reaction Lab, a really fantastic organization, but a little smaller of an organization. So I wanted to contrast it with a much larger organization like Netflix. So Netflix, probably many of you are know Netflix, right? They produce a lot of great content. Uh, they have just a really great DEI statement. So separate from their mission statement. So, you know, their mission statement's more around like creating, you know, digital content and, and the best content that they can make, but they do have a separate statement just for DEI. And I think just, uh, uh, just to read it out loud for everybody, uh, Netflix's greatest impact is in storytelling. Stories like The 13th, Disclosure, Selena, uh, The Five Bloods, Special, and The Half of It Broden represents empathy and understanding. We create and connect these stories to people all around the globe, removing the barriers of language, device ability, or connectivity. Better representation on screen starts with representation in the office. Our work has to be internal first, so it can impact what we do externally. We believe we'll do that better if our employees come from different backgrounds and if we create an environment of inclusion and belonging for them. So I love this DEI statement because it talks not just about like kind of their products and what they're making, it gives some really great examples at the front there, but also just really puts the, the, the focus inwards and says, we as a company need to do better here. And that's how we're gonna tell the best stories. So it really kind of bridges between their mission statement uh, between what their focus is with DEI. And so something else that I was really impressed with network Netflix is that they have a ton of employee resource groups. And so I just put a couple up, up there on the screen. And um, But some things that are not on the screen that I thought were really fantastic was they do also have kind of some great representation data on who their employees are, but also who their leadership is. And this data kind of breaks things down by like race and ethnicity, as well as gender. So it's not a complete list, um, but it's definitely kind of uh, some, some of the most complete information, you know, the, uh, the most information I've been able to find on a company like easily when with sharing their data and statistics. And so with that, I'll, I'll pass it back over to Alicia and we'll talk a little bit more about interviewing. Thanks, Chris. Um, so if you think about company research as something that you're sort of doing while you're thinking about applying to a company or you're researching the types of companies that you might apply to. Like Chris said, you're looking at their website, you're reading their DEI statements, you're kind of getting an understanding of who they are putting out into the world. Is it something that you relate with? One of the best ways you can continue to find out more information about a company is by interviewing. So let's say you've done all your research and you're like, great, I'm going to apply and you get an interview. That research doesn't stop at the, the application. You can keep researching while you interview. So, you know, we often think that the interview process is an opportunity for the company just to get to know you, but it's really when you get to sit down and ask questions straight to someone who works there. So the best thing you can do is really be prepared to ask questions that are going to help shed a light on the company's culture, their commitments to DEI. Um, this is a way that you can figure out how the company engages and supports employees, figure out their values, uh, figure out how the company deals with conflict and if that's something that you agree with or not. Um, it's a great way to figure out the day-to-day -day work environment and what that culture is going to be like. So we're gonna talk through quite a few sample questions that um, we encourage you to write down, to take with you, to ask. These are a lot of questions. You are also going to need to ask other questions in your interview. So pick maybe one to three that are most important to you or things that you really value and want to ask. Um, and this can also happen at different places in the hiring uh, process so or in the interview process. So if you're meeting with HR, there are questions you can ask. If you get to meet with your hiring manager, there are other questions you can ask. If there's someone on your team that uh, you feel like might have a similar experience to you, there are certain questions you can ask. So you can be really pointed with when and who you ask these questions to. 
So first question, what are your company values? Um, and you can you can bring this up conversationally too. You can say, you know, I noticed your mission statement on your website. I would love to hear more about your company values. Um, when you ask this question though, be sure to think about what values you want to hear. Um, this is really where that uh, understanding your identity and what values are important to you um, really comes into play because if they answer something and it you want to come um, to that question with understanding of what's important to you and what's not. So if the values are vague in this question, um, you can ask how they affect, uh, how those values affect daily life in the company. Um, how do you foster an open communicative environment for your employees? This question can shed light on a company's willingness to provide a safe and open space for all of their employees to voice their concerns. Um, your interviewer might not know the ins and outs of the company's formal policy, but they should be able to speak to their personal experience in this. When and how do people like to give feedback, especially in your creative career, this is going to be very important. Feedback is a huge part of your creative process, uh, more than likely, but also a great uh, tool to use in the workplace no matter what. Um, healthy conflict is okay. It allows employees to share and resolve multiple viewpoints. Um, and it's most often resolved by sharing real-time feedback. So be it positive or constructive. So asking this question can kind of help you get a clear understanding of how a company is going to handle that conflict when it comes up. Joining an inclusive team is important to me. How do you promote inclusivity on your team so that all employees can succeed? So again, maybe you read their DEI statement, they said something about inclusivity. This is a really good opportunity to find out how it, that will translate into a real life experience on your team with your teammates in the culture that you would uh, potentially be working in. Do you have employee resource groups? Maybe you looked on their website and they're not Netflix and they don't list them. And having an employee resource group is really important to you um, and something that you feel like will be beneficial. You can ask this question. This is a great question to ask HR or a recruiter, um, but you should be able to ask this question at any point in your hiring process. What goals does the organization have surrounding diversity, equity, and inclusion? Again, maybe you've read this on your website, but you wanna know how this directly relates to your work, your department, um, what role you'll have in this, if any, um, and this will kind of, again, help you suss out whether your values align with what the company is telling you. And you can ask about culture directly. How would you describe your company culture? Um, I think this is a really great way to just hear from the, the current employee themselves on how they would describe their company culture. Um, and one recommendation I have is if there are certain questions that are really important to you, ask the same questions to everyone you interview with and kind of get a sense of how everyone is, is answering them. Are, are they all answering them the same? That kind of gives you a clue as to, okay, everything they're saying makes sense and it's everyone in the company feels the same way and um, is approached the same in the company or has the same experience. So maybe what they're saying um, is true and aligns. Um, it'll kind of give you a sense of what the company culture is really like if multiple people are answering the same questions. Um, so with that, I will also say once you have finished interviewing, you're really going to want to check in with yourself post interview to reflect on how you felt about that interview experience. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that in our next slide of deciding if the company is right for you and how you begin to do that. And a first way to kind of start doing that is post interview. Um, how did you feel in that interview? How was your communication? Were there any microaggressions that you picked up on, any red flags that you picked up on. Um, if you were in the office, what did that office environment look and feel like? Is it something that you feel like you would want to be a part of? Do you feel like from first impression that you would belong there? Um, and continuing to reflect on that. Um, overall, self-reflection is really important in just deciding whether a company is right for you. And this happens both during the job search process while you work at the company and uh, while you continue to want to build community within that company. And so I'll let my colleagues chime in a little bit and talk further. Yeah, sure, sure, I'd be happy to. Oh, go ahead. Go for it. No, go for it, Liz. <laughs> <Okay>. Yeah. <laughs> Just know that um, it's 
absolutely possible because you will be putting your best foot forward. The company will also be putting their best foot forward in that interview process. So know that even for the first year you're at a company, you might not know whether this is the place for you, um, maybe for a few months or a year, just because you haven't found that footing yet, or you're not quite sure you haven't found that mentor group or that um, you know, collaborative resource um, group yet. Um, but take that, take that first year and just assess whether you feel like you're able to authentically show up. So when I, <laughs> when I enter a meeting, I have my son's artwork behind me. <laughs> I have a pile of Legos next to me. And then that is, that is who I am when I show up to every meeting. And um, that is my full self coming to work. And I, I am welcome in these spaces. Um, and I feel comfortable coming to these spaces. And so that makes me feel like I belong. I'm welcome here. Um, and that helps me know that this is a place that I feel like I can grow. Um, despite what my background shows or despite, you know, my, what my Zoom background shows or my personal background shows. <laughs> um, so continue to, like Alicia said, continue to reflect on those spaces. Um, <clears throat> are you able to discuss your family situation? Are you able to discuss your partner with your colleagues? Um, are you able to say what you did that weekend um, without feeling shame or shying away from those conversations? Um, and are you... Do discussions take place outside of the normative workplace culture? So, um, you know, having those conversations about saying, oh yeah, I went to um, like a Black History Month parade this, this weekend. Is that something that you feel like comfortable that you can say in the workplace? Or do you feel like you have to kind of hide um, what you've done or um, be more demure about that? Those are just conversations that um, you should be able to have if that's your <coughs> lifestyle. Without feeling, without feeling like um, you need to hide that aspect of yourself. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, and I was just going to add that, as Liz said, it could take some time for you to kind of integrate into the community and, and really become part of the community. But as you're going along, feel free to build that community yourself. So, uh, of course, exploring established ERGs are a great thing to do, but if there's not one that you feel like represents you or uh, one that you feel like isn't representing your community, then feel free to you know, pitch the idea to build it. Um, you know, start just like connecting with colleagues and, and that, you know, thinking about finding a potential mentor who might have some similar identities to you within the company can also just be really helpful in building that, that, that community. And then again, thinking about like, can you address DEI issues when they arise? So sometimes things just happen. And, and even if it's a great place to work, something just might have happened uh, that impacts in, through the lens of DEI. And thinking about, can you as a community come together and kind of address it and solve it? And actually that could be an amazing community building opportunity as well. And we also want to make sure that as you are going through this sort of self-reflecting in this way and approaching your job search process, that you know that you have our two teams here to support you in both your job search process and in working through anything related to DEI, um, whether it's related to your career or other. Um, and so there's both CPD advising. You can meet with Chris. You can meet with our advisor, Evelyn. Um, so you can create an appointment on Art Center Connect. Um, and Chris has this really wonderful CPD self-assessment tool um, that's super helpful with your job search process. So, you know, if you imagine using that in conjunction with the identity wheel and it's kind of your job search powerhouse tool right there. Um, and then Liz, you can talk a little bit about DEI advising and opportunities. Absolutely. So we have um, multiple opportunities to um, workshops such as this, workshops such as um, that are coming up th uh, later this week on Thursday, um, which is self care and social activism, and many other workshops about learning about um, different uh, marginalized identities and how to either be an advocate for yourself in um, either in this community at Art Center or in the communities at large. Um, that you find yourself in. So you can learn with us at any one of our events. Um, most of our events are, are learning related. Some of them are celebratory, but that's always fun too, <laughs> to connect and network. Um, but you're welcome to join any of our events that are coming up. You can work with us. 
Um, so you can join one of our upcoming creativist student meetings and learn what it means to be an inclusive leader. Um, we happen to have one of our creativists with us right now. And I'm so <laughs> happy, <laughs> hi, Alan, um, that he was able to join us in, um, and I feel like there's opportunity to have deeper conversations than a person is able to have maybe in like their classroom setting or maybe in even like a social setting. Um, we can really deep dive into identity work, um, what it means to be an ally, um, what it means to be an imperfect ally, um, and also what happens when you mess up because we're human and, and we'll make mistakes. Um, so all of those really deep learning things that um, we, we talk about in those um, creativist meetings. And then you can also meet with us. Um, you're welcome to set up a one-on-one -on -one or small group meeting to ask personal questions. Um, you can ask things like, what, what are microaggressions? Or is this a microaggression? I had this happen in class. It didn't feel right. Can you help me un unpack this a little bit for myself? Um, talking about deeper self-knowledge, we can go into that social identity wheel. Um, or other things, there's lots of other exercises we can do um, and personal questions you're not finding the answer to on campus. Great, thank you. Um, so yeah. I do wanna open it up to questions now. Um, I am going to drop a handout in the chat for you. And I just wanna remind everyone in the room that this will be recorded um, and we'll share it with everyone that attended. But if you have a friend who maybe couldn't make it or you feel like would really benefit from this workshop, feel free to send them that recording too. Um, it's a great way to kind of share that knowledge around as well. All right, I'll go ahead and turn off the recording for the Q&A.